Welcome to Crypto Smasher. Here we explore all things cryptocurrency. If you're interested in being informed when we put out our informative and sometimes entertaining videos, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. In today's third installment of our Reddit comments, I will be highlighting some insightful comments on a couple of topics related to the Evergrow project. The first topic concerns a cryptic tweet from the Evergrow team, and the second topic revolves around the impact of a centralized exchange listing. The intention of these videos are solely for informative purposes. Okay so let's begin. This cryptic tweet from the Evergrow team inspired the following three comments. Comment 1. To be honest this metaverse talk lowers my enthusiasm. I'm confident in the team slash project, which is why I keep increasing my bag size. But I'd like to see Crater be a home run, along with a wallet before more commitments are made. Feels like hype right now. Comment 2. It's a nothing post really and kind of frustrates me as I just want real focus on delivering one thing and delivering it well, then move on to the next, not going for gold on every event, NFT marketplace, wallet, crater, metaverse etc. Not saying they can't do these things, I just want us to deliver one of them really well, and then the next. Anyway, I'm not hyped until it's here. But I don't need a coin that pumps today and dumps tomorrow. Long-term sustainable growth with deliverables on the regular with clear focus on each project stream by project teams. Then we moon. Comment 3. A quick Google tells me things like, Sandbox team is over 100 people, Axie Infinity has 40 full-time staff. Delivering big projects takes a lot of dedicated people, so let's just focus and not try those big boots on just yet. I am simply striving for project scope focus and drive to deliver things like Crater to a high standard. Enhance it, grow it, market it, expand it through diversification into related products when the time is right. Move smart, not fast. Unless you just want quick bucks from hype. Long-term sustainable growth needs a long-term approach. I don't recall seeing many business teams create a roadmap proclaiming to deliver such a diverse range of products and deliver on them all well in the same short time frame. Most you will find is, create a single product, deliver on it with something unique. Then diversify, maintain brand feel across the new deliverable and then on to the next. Add a metaverse project to the mix and it smells like trying to deliver another project because it's hot right now. Or, we could deliver what's planned first then introduce the next elements of growth in the business later. That's it for the first topic. The second topic is on how centralized exchanges would impact the present tokenomics. First there's a question and four comments or replies. First, the question. If all the volume migrates to centralized exchange as new listings go up how do you earn passive income? Since the centralized exchange buys are not getting taxed how does that work for the decentralized exchange buyers? Just curious because it feels like we will get cut out of a lot of future volume. Comment 1. People will buy on a decentralized exchange and transfer to centralized exchange if the price difference is enough for arbitrage. Agree why would I pay the taxes if they can just buy without? Right now if I was to buy and hold, I have no idea why you would buy on BitMart. I could get more Evergrow coins on a decentralized exchange even paying the taxes. Evergrow coins on PancakeSwap are so much cheaper than on BitMart. If I want to do arbitrage, then I would do the below once BitMart fixes their transfer for Evergrow. There will always be a price difference between a centralized and decentralized exchange, but that price difference shouldn't be this great. BitMart is having issues with transfers. A lot of talk has been about arbitrage and these issues from BitMart are not allowing it. Arbitrage as I understand it is the buying, transferring and selling between networks to take advantage of price differences. Assuming current prices on decentralized exchange is 0.0000063898 and on BitMart it's 0.0000137. Buy 100 million coins on decentralized exchange and the cost is $72.84 with the 14% tax to transfer the Evergrow coins to BitMart. You will pay 28% of the Evergrow coins for the transfer of Evergrow coins received on BitMart is 720000 at a value of $98.64. You have made money off of the price differences and the decentralized exchange holder will be paid reflections on the buy and transfer. 
People have told me there are bots that do this in seconds so normal holders will not be able to capitalize on this once Bitmart resolves their issues. Comment 2. Even though I was really upset when they announced that Evergrow would be going on the exchanges with no tax on trading, the 14% tax on centralized exchanges would probably never work, just too much of a hindrance on trading. I was hoping the team could come up with a deal of say 2.5% on all centralized exchange trades, with no rewards for tokens listed on a centralized exchange. Let the exchange have 0.5% to give them incentive to put it into their system and 2% goes back to decentralized exchange holders as rewards. The liquidity pool, marketing and burn would still be handled strictly by decentralized trading. I think this would up rewards considerably and bring back more interest in the coin. Ever since that announcement, the coin price and daily volume has really gone downhill. Either way, I hope they come up with some solution this coming year for rewards off the exchange trading, I don't want them to do any more exchange deals without it. Once we are trading on an exchange free of taxes, I think it's going to be harder to pull that back and start taxing. Comment 3. The reflections tokenomics not migrating to a centralized exchange along with the volume exclusion caused me some concern as well. I can't see in the near term centralized exchanges deciding to change their tokenomic structure anytime soon. What's their incentive to do this when they are busy with higher market caps of already established projects? There are more and more reflection tokens every day though, so it's not hopeless. I don't think the incentive to go from a centralized to a decentralized exchange is going to be as attractive as people or dev teams think. Why would the average person tackle the barrier to decentralized exchange entry and the transfer tax for what might be pennies a day of say a 500 million bag? In order to justify the relatively large transfer tax from a centralized to a decentralized exchange, the person would need to have a significant bag to mitigate that cost by receiving comparable to better reflections, tens of billions of tokens. That's already a big buy for most people, and as the price goes up, it becomes even more out of reach. Now, if the volume is absolutely insane on utilities, then that changes things, but Evergrow utilities will need to be adopted on a pretty massive scale for this to impact smaller to average size bags. That would take some time. I honestly think this is why we saw such a big price drop after the centralized exchange announcement, that the tokenomics were not going to be incorporated as promised. I worry that decentralized exchange investors are going to get left in the dust as more and more centralized exchange investments get added. Comment 4. I think we will see moves in both directions from decentralized to centralized exchanges along the course of the project. The move from a decentralized to a centralized exchange will be arbitrage play which is great for decentralized exchange holders. We get reflections on transfer and then the same folks buying back on a decentralized exchange. Similarly, there will be times when people move from a centralized to a decentralized exchange for utilities. Good thing is that the supply on the centralized exchange side will come down pushing the price up on the centralized exchange. When it moves higher, people will do the arbitrage play again, driving more reflections as explained above. My plan is to buy and hold on decentralized exchange regardless. That's all for today's curated comments, be sure to leave a comment with any thoughts you may have on the highlighted topics and I hope to see you in the next video.